Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm trying three recipes for lunch ideas from the 1950s. Today's recipes come to us from Betty Crocker's Good and Easy Cookbook. This book was originally published in 1954 and I'll talk a little bit more about it later. Lunch ideas. I think we could all use a few new ones. I think lunch is one of those meals where you tend to get into a little bit of a rut. Things can be a bit repetitive. You just kind of make the same things over and over and maybe you like that and it's fine, you know? But maybe you're also looking for a little bit more variety. So I chose three recipes from this cookbook, Betty Crocker's Good and Easy Cookbook, mostly because they promise to be both good and easy, which is <laughs> kind of what I'm looking for when it comes to lunch. I also chose three recipes that you could kind of mix and match together and make your own little, you know, combo meal kind of thing. So if you're looking for some new ideas for your day-to-day -day lunch, you know, maybe you'll find some inspiration in this video. I'm trying this macaroni salmon salad from the combination salads section of the book. This should come together quickly because all of my ingredients are prepped. So I have some cooked macaroni here. I am going to include the recipe in the description down below as I always do. and some diced cucumber. If you hear the thunder in the background, I apologize. As I was prepping all of my ingredients, the sun was shining and it was beautiful. Right before I started filming, we, we got a thunderstorm. And I have some flaked salmon. Now this part is pretty customizable. It says you can use salmon and it is a salmon macaroni salad. But at the end of the recipe in the variation section, it says that you can use tuna or leftover cooked meat, chicken, veal, etc. So kind of like do what you want. I decided to go with salmon just, just to give it a try. I have some grated onion. I went with a red onion because that is what I have. <laughs> and some minced parsley, some mayonnaise. This is just plain old mayonnaise. Use what you like. I'm using Hellman's. And finally, just some salt and pepper. It's a very simple dressing. So I'm going to just kind of stir this together to combine. Yes, this is a new bowl. This is a new bowl. <laughs> it is a Pyrex bowl. And I got it along with a smaller green bowl for $8.50. So I could not say no, you understand. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> we made the whole salad. It says you can serve this hot or cold. I think I'm going to put this in the fridge for just a, a little bit before I give it a taste. This is also something you could easily make ahead of time, of course. There is my salmon macaroni salad. The good news is the sun is back out. <laughs> I just put a little cucumber on top to fancy it up for the thumbnail. So time to taste. Pasta salads in general, I usually think of them as like a colder salad. That's why I wanted to chill this, but it says that you can serve it warm if you want. And I think it would probably be fine. Let's get a little bite. Mmm. That is really good. I like the crunch from the cucumber. I cooked my macaroni for like the minimum amount of time so that it would be a little bit of a firmer bite, especially as the salad sits in the fridge and absorbs some of the mayonnaise. It's really good with that salmon. I mean, of course you have to like salmon if you're gonna use salmon. If you don't, use something else. <laughs> I mean, I never think to put like flaked salmon in something like this, but it adds like a nice like rich flavor to it but it is so simple. There's not like a ton to it either. It wasn't a complicated dressing. There's no celery in it, which is a plus for me, of course. The cucumber actually is a nice stand-in, I think. Yeah, I really like this one. This is definitely one that you can make ahead of time and just kind of have in the fridge at the ready when you are ready for lunch. So now I'm doing this broiled bacon and tomato sandwich. Doesn't that sound amazing? This is an open-faced sandwich. And I know that some of you like to say that open-faced sandwiches aren't really sandwiches. I don't have time to argue with you, so you are gonna have to take that up with Betty Crocker herself. Yes, I know, she's not real. So right now I'm just toasting a piece of sandwich bread. You're supposed to toast it a little bit more on one side than the other. I think I'm gonna stop that here. There's my bread, lightly toasted on one side, more toasted on the other. So now I need to put some butter on there. I know the lighting is weird. Like I said, it's still kind of a rainstorm out there. Top with tomato slices. Okay, so. I have some tomato slices here. I drain them for a little on a paper towel and then I put a little salt and pepper on them. If I'm adding tomato slices to just about anything, I like to season them up a bit. Nice little pile of tomatoes. And then we've got some bacon. This is just some bacon that I pre-cooked in the oven and have in my fridge. 
always good to have a little bit of bacon. It's two slices, but I kind of cut each or broke each slice into two pieces. So far, so good. And now top with a thin slice of cheese. I'm using American cheese because I like it, but you can use what you want. <laughs> and I have to broil this until the cheese melts. I'm just gonna use my toaster oven. That's what, you know, toaster ovens are kind of for. <laughs> Making one sandwich at a time. Turn this, yep. My toaster oven does have a broil mode. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on it and take it out when the cheese melts. So I probably broiled this for, I'm gonna say like four minutes in the toaster oven. It smells really good because of course baking, baking cooking smells really good. Uh, it is an open face sandwich, as I said. You can maybe put another piece of bread on this if you want, but I'm not going to. I got a knife and fork out, but I think I can just pick this up. I think it's like stable enough. I think it's good enough for me to just pick up and eat like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, can you really go wrong with tomato, bacon, and cheese? Not really. They're just all really good flavors together. Cheese, tomato, bacon, and then the toast. I love toast in general, but just like putting this on toast is wonderful. Anyway, I know this is very similar to what you'd have as like a grilled cheese with tomato and bacon. I don't know, I kind of like that it's open-faced and it's like a toast that you can pick up. It's also very fast. Uh, in the toaster oven, especially if you have your bacon sort of all pre-cooked and ready to go. That's why I chose these three recipes because all of them were either very fast and or you could make them ahead of time. This one you would wanna make at the last minute, but it didn't take very long at all. This is my lunch today. I'm gonna enjoy this thoroughly and then I'll move on to the next recipe. <laughs> I love having soup for lunch, so I thought I would give this quick potato soup a try. The reason it's so quick is because it uses instant mashed potatoes. So it says, add the chicken broth and the onion. So I have my chicken broth. I'm cutting this recipe in half, but I will have the full recipe in the description down below. And onion, this is grated onion. I'm really trying to use some things up. So yes, I understand it probably wouldn't have been like a purple or red onion in here, but that's what we're going with. So now I need to bring this to a boil. That didn't take long at all. So the chicken broth has started to boil. I need to add some milk and my mashed potato flakes and a little bit of salt and pepper. And that is it. So now I need to heat this to boiling again. And that's our soup. That's all. I told you it was quick. First impressions of this soup, it's, it's a bit on the thinner side, but I do think that it might thicken up a little bit as it cools. This is like piping hot right now. It smells very good. It was very easy. <laughs> all, of the, all of the recipes in this cookbook are supposed to be both good and easy. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it is. Oh, it is tasty. Oh, it is tasty. Mmm. I really taste the pepper. Like that comes through like right away. The ingredients on this one were just so simple and things that I pretty much already had in my pantry and fridge. Really good with the, um, with the cooked onion in it. It's a very simple, tasty potato soup. Like I said, I think it's gonna thicken a little bit as it cools, but I think if it doesn't or it doesn't thicken up enough for me, I, I would possibly add a little bit more of the potato flakes. But I think this would be a good soup to kind of like sip from a mug. Do you like to do that? I do. You know, if it's like a nice like broth or like a thinner soup, I like to take it and like consume it from a mug. This one would be a good candidate for that because there's not like a ton of big chunky vegetables or anything in it. It's just very simple, uh, but I think it's really good. I think it would be a good thing to accompany the sandwich or the salad. That is why I chose these recipes because I wanted them to be able to be mixed and matched. Uh, I don't know that it's it makes a great standalone. I feel like you'd need to eat it with some bread or you know a sandwich or something like that. But if you're not feeling super well, you need to eat something, but maybe you don't want chicken noodle soup, I think this is a good one. Cause again, it's very, very simple, but pretty tasty, very warm and comforting. Betty Crocker's Good and Easy Cookbook was originally published in 1954. Now this little tiny book might look a little bit familiar to you, but you're thinking, no, no, it was published in 1962. You know, you're, you're almost right. <laughs> because Betty Crocker also had Betty Crocker's new Good and Easy Cookbook, and this one was published in 1962. So you can see the size difference. Also, I love that they kind of um, made them look similar, but different. You know, we have the white brick background, some of the same elements, 
you know, in this book appear on this cover as well. But if you take a closer look, the one from 1954, not only is it smaller, of course, but this is a drawing. Like these are illustrations on the front. The 1962 version has photographs. So I think it's so cool how they, they tried to kind of match them up a little bit, but they're definitely different. I'm going to be focusing on this one right now, <laughs> but you know, in the future I might cover the new Good and Easy cookbook. Love that difference. I don't know. Maybe not interesting to you, but definitely interesting to me. So this one, it's a first edition fourth printing. It's not in the greatest of shape, but I still love it. You know, I don't always need to have my cookbooks in pristine condition and truly it can be impossible to find, <laughs> to find cookbooks in pristine condition especially ones that were well loved, you know, maybe they have some stains on the pages or something like that, rips and tears, but you know, I still enjoy them. I love the little illustrations and the margins in this one, just to kind of show you the contents page. I think that's so cute. And they, you know, I see this kind of thing a lot in 50s cookbooks where they theme them to a color kind of like, maybe one page is all blue and black illustrations, or in this case, like red and black. You know, they do like a two color kind of printing. Also, you'll notice it has uh, sections for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and fourth meal. So fourth meal consists of coffee get togethers, afternoon teas, dessert parties, holiday open houses, treats for children, evening snacks, teenage gatherings. I love it, you know, you gotta have those snacks, right? Um, <laughs> and the fact that they call it fourth meal makes me giggle because didn't Taco Bell have a campaign for something like an ad campaign a few years back and their their whole thing was fourth meal like they invented it? <laughs> you know, just to show you a few more of these beautiful like blue and black kind of illustrations. So much fun to just look through really, even if you're not going to cook any of the recipes. So this is a really, really beautiful photograph of some like coffee breads, breakfast breads, coffee cake, that kind of thing. So pretty. And then we have pancake time. <laughs> we do have some cool photographs in here to look at. I don't believe that any of the dishes I made have photographs, but I could be mistaken. I'll have to look through a little bit more. So I also really like that this cookbook is divided into meals. I do think that it was really interesting and actually pretty helpful for this video because there is an entire chapter that's just on like lunch dishes. Oh, I'm sorry, lunch or supper. <laughs> so, I mean, you could probably, of course, use these for, for whatever you wanted, but a lot of these dishes, um, a lot of these recipes were for things like sandwiches, soups, um, salads, just maybe things that were a little bit more associated with lunch. But let's face it, you can eat whatever kind of meal you want, whatever time of day you want, slash whatever fits your needs, everybody's different. So then within the chapters on each meal, it's kind of divided further. So like this is the lunch chapter, but it's the desserts portion of the lunch chapter. So I do like that too. Also one heck of a, one heck of a sandwich spread right here. Oh my gosh, these illustrations, they're just so cute. They're like, I just love how they're kind of interspersed through as well. Like. I mean, this roast duck, sad, sad about the duck, <laughs> but it is very cute. It just doesn't seem to know its fate yet. Something about these little teeny details really, really makes me smile. And you know how much I enjoy a Betty Crocker cookbook. Um, oh, this is especially fun because, you know, one of my favorite cookbooks of all time, you know, and probably mm, maybe my favorite Betty Crocker cookbook. I don't know. It's tied. It's tied with Betty Crocker's cookbook for boys and girls. But anyway, I love the Betty Crocker cookie book and this is a nice like holiday cookie spread. Yes, I love it. Cake mix magic. So we're getting into Betty Crocker cake mixes and probably frosting mixes as well in this chapter. Those frosting mixes right now, the only one that I think is available or at least the only one I can find is the fluffy white frosting mix. I mean, I, I haven't been able to find the other ones, but there are a lot of recipes out there that use the different flavors of frosting mixes that used to be available. And you know, they probably have to be adapted in some way now just because you can't get those products anymore. Ooh, quails, franks and beans, frankfurters, roast lamb, chicken and biscuits. I'm just looking at some of the dinner, some of the dinner ideas in here. But anyway, uh, back to <laughs> back to the lunch section of this book, which is what I cooked from today. What I really wanted to do here is maybe inspire some new ideas in people for what they could have for lunch, what they could make for lunch, whether it be something you make ahead of time or something that you make on the fly. I know, you know, a lot of us work at home. Maybe you have the time to cook something up for yourself for lunch rather than pack it, but 
you know, whatever, whatever you can manage to do. I just wanted to give you some ideas. And I also wanted to pick three things that you could combine in some way. So sort of an at home you pick two <laughs> kind of situation. So the sandwich could go with a cup of the soup or, you know, a bowl of the soup and a cup of the salad or the salad and the sandwich. So you can kind of like mix and match them in any way that works for you or any way that you enjoy. Getting into the dishes that I made today. So the first thing I started with was the macaroni salmon salad. I wanted to put it in the fridge for a little bit, but it says that you can eat it hot or cold. And really, I think it could be delicious either way. I really enjoy a very simple macaroni salad. So if you've ever had like Hawaiian mac salad, I usually, I, I've had the kind that's like basically macaroni, mayonnaise, shredded carrot, and just like a pinch of celery seed. And that's kind of like my favorite way to have macaroni salad. And that is what this reminded me of and with the addition of cucumbers, which gave it like a nice crunch and the kind of crunch that I enjoy. It was so good. It was simple plus the addition of salmon, which gave it such a delicious flavor. If you like salmon, which I do, it gave it kind of a more rich and filling kind of flavor, I guess. Like it could be more of a meal than than like a side dish almost. So I, I think I would definitely make that one again. Um, it was just, it was simple, but so good. So the second thing I made was the broiled bacon and tomato sandwich. And this book is full of different sandwiches and sandwich filling. So, you know, something that you can maybe make more of a spread, make it ahead of time and put it on bread. Um, this was more something that you would make at right before that you were going to consume it. Delicious. Of course it was. I mean, bacon, tomato, and cheese. Unbeatable combination as far as flavors go. Um, and it was an open-faced sandwich. Uh, I know some people <laughs> don't really like to use the term open-faced sandwich. I have like no feelings on it. It's fine. And I kind of liked that I could pick it up and eat it like a toast. It was nice. I, of course, used American cheese, but you could use whatever cheese that you want. This was a very like not super precise recipe when it came to like quantities and stuff. It didn't list like the ingredients and the quantities in the beginning and then have the recipe underneath. It was more like, take this, put it with that. Who cares what, <laughs> who cares how much, that kind of thing. What a treat in the middle of the day to have such a flavorful and delicious sandwich, you know, a hot sandwich too. Like that was very rainy and kind of weird weather-wise yesterday. So it was nice to have a sort of a little treat like that. Of course, you could just make a grilled cheese sandwich with bacon and tomato, but I don't know, something about just making this open-faced and broiling it made it like extra special to me. Definitely something that maybe I don't always think about, but something that will be in my lunch rotation on the regular, I think. Especially because I, I typically have most of the stuff on hand, like bacon, I usually cook a package of bacon at a time and then I refrigerate it and just take out the pre-cooked pieces as needed. The only thing I don't keep on hand all the time is probably the tomato. But you know, how good would this be when tomatoes are in season? Tell me that. <laughs> Definitely making this this summer. And then finally, the quick potato soup. Indeed, indeed it was quick. It was more, I would say that this is more of a sippable soup than like a hearty, you know, sit down to a big bowl of hearty soup. It did thicken a little bit overnight as it sat, but still probably thinner than what I think of as like, you know, a hearty potato soup, I guess, but really good. Like flavor wise, it was very good. It came together so quickly and I can just see myself kind of sipping it from a mug. I don't know. I like sipping a mug of broth or a mug of soup sometimes. And this is like, this kind of fits the bill there. Also very warm and comforting. I think I mentioned in the, like while I was making it in the video, like I think it would be great to have this soup if you maybe you weren't like feeling very well, if you were a little under the weather, you know, maybe you're having a rough time and which we all do. And sometimes it can be hard to just like feed yourself. This is something that I think is, would be so easy to just like throw a few things together and then have more of a comforting kind of meal, whatever you can do for yourself, you know? It's maybe a little bit different than like going to, let's say just, I'm just gonna say Panera Bread. I always think of Panera Bread for like a you pick two lunch. You know, their soups are like very hearty and have a lot of stuff in them. This is not that soup, but I think it has its place and it has a really good flavor. Just a few lunch ideas for you. I hope that, you know, I provided a little bit of inspiration just to get you out of that lunch rut day to day. But if you like eating the same thing every day, that's fine too. Like just forget, forget all of what I said, but still, you know, thank you for watching the video anyway. If you love recipes and cookbooks from the 1950s, 
I have an entire playlist and I'll link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some additional content, you can join me over on Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you're interested in joining. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!